Hello, everybody, and welcome. This will be an MLG replay from MLG Anaheim. We've got a great series for you here. This is actually game one of the loser's bracket. You're looking at none other than Millennium Todd spawning as the blue Protoss. He will be facing off against Slayer's Alicia spawning as the red Protoss. I'm Tumba. Co-casting with me for the series will be Dark and Light. That's right, Tumba, and this is indeed the loser's bracket. So these players actually didn't meet in the winner's bracket very early in the tournament, I believe, actually round one. And Todd was able to 2-0 the Korean Alicia, so it's very impressive by him. I'm sure no one expected that, so we'll have to see if he can repeat the feat. He is moving. He is going into this series with a 2-0 lead, of course, extended series giving him that. So he only has to take two games, whereas Alicia has to take four. So he does have that at the very least. Well, he's going to need it as Koreans obviously representing at the MLG appearances, not just Anaheim, but of course, Columbus and all the others as well. So having said all this, let's rewind for a second. Got to make mention Millennium Todd. You want to know what I love about this player? What's that, Tumba? I think you know where I'm going with this. Uh, both fans of yeah. Star Wars, the fact that Millennium is in his name, a big fan of the Millennium Falcon myself. <laughs> yes, yes. So, yeah, gotta say that uh, de facto means I like Millennium Todd. But it, I'm kind of torn enough. here too, though, because, you know, big fan of the GSL as well. Love watching Slayer's Alicia. I know that I believe uh, Artosis has a bit of a man crush on him. So we'll yeah. have to see exactly how this shakes out. Yeah, Alicia, quite the player himself, it was able to take off uh, games off MC and some PvP, so uh, we'll have to see how this one shakes out. Uh, Todd, he ha did take the first series, so he's obviously no slouch himself. They're pretty even, I would say. So the state of PvP right now, still pretty 4-gate heavy. So we have seen new, some uh, new builds come out, some more creative builds, as you like to say, Darken, out of Protoss, but uh, what do you think we're going to see here? Would not be surprised, to, as you said, see some four gates out of these players. Uh, I, I know that there are some good builds coming out of some players. Nani One Huck being some good examples of that, but still, yeah, typically four gate is the predominant uh, instance of what we do see. Uh, and neither player has taken a second gas yet, so it is shaping them to be just that. We'll have to see uh, what they do out for the early ship and how they do have time where they could take a second gas and make some kind of tech switch. I have to say that I feel like if Alicia would just go with a standard four gate, that would suit him very well, because obviously uh, he's very practiced, got that Korean control. He uh, is a regular, I believe, he's, is he Code S? He is Code S, I believe. Uh, recently, he may have been knocked into the up and down matches. I don't know that for certain, though. At any rate, very competent Protoss, and I just have this feeling that if he gets a, a four gate jump on Todd, it's going to spell certain doom. Absolutely, I do not disagree with you. Looks like, though, he will be opting to take the gas this time around, waiting until that probe, scouting probe did leave his base before he did drop that, so that Todd had no idea what he was going to be going for. And look at this. Todd will be going, be the one going for the foregate this time around, so I'll have to see uh, which build does come out ahead. Again, caster's curse, so I guess Alicia just not going to listen to me, but that's fine. Of course. It's the Chobo, so what do I know? We go ahead and do his own thing. Fine, Alicia, I'm not offended. <laughs> yeah, well, he does have three gates down, so I'm not expecting any kind of robo play out of him. So, looks like he will be dropping that Twilight Council, as I was expecting. Going to be opting for some kind of DT play, possibly, or three gate blink stalker. We do see surprised. an engagement here, though, and this is kind of critical, because if you can get any type of advantage possible in this early game, every single unit counts. So we're going to see right here, Alicia with some good micro going ahead and splitting his Zealot away from his Stalker and going to engage Todd here and try to go ahead and get up a unit on him. And obviously in these mirror matchups, every unit is so important, especially in PvP because you only get a few early on until you can get that Warp Gate upgrade up. Uh, Todd only has that one Zealot, a Stalker, and a Sentry. His opponent only one Zealot and one Stalker. So Darken. if you lose those, you're pretty open to those counterattacks. Yes, you are. Look at this, Darken. Researching Blink and... Man, Alicia, again, citing he has such great control and great decision-making, yep. he will be very, very dangerous once that Blink upgrade finishes. 
Yes, indeed. He will be opting for that Blink Stalker play. It's so effective if you have the good control, especially against this 4-gate. Looks like Todd is looking to posture on the map a bit, push out with these Blink Stalkers. But I really feel like right now, Alicia, he has a much better unit count with these Warpins. And I think Todd will be forced back here in just a second. Going to poke in, see what damage he can do. Going to get a few shit, uh, gonna get, get a few uh, hits off on those before he just pull back. Yeah, and of course, we're going to see now Alicia go ahead and move out. And that's a bit of a scary army from Alicia, I must say, Darkin. I gotta feel uh, a little yeah. bit worried if I was Millennium Todd right now. And if you look at the supply, actually 48 of 50 for Alicia, 42 of 50 for Millennium Todd. And he's gonna try to pick off the Stalker here. He's got a lone Stalker, and he's gonna try to track him down here. Yeah, it looks like he will be able to escape with that Stalker for the moment, but another blink should be enough to take it out. That cooldown just now finishing. Gonna blink for it again, and then take out that Stalker very quickly before he does pull back. Does not want to move up that ramp. He knows that he will pull it back. And now that Todd, he does have the reinforcement advantage. No proxy pylon right now out for Alicia. It looks like Alicia will be pulling it, pushing in regardless. Blinking back at Stalker. No damage done yet. Looking so impressive right now. And it looks I, like he... Uh, I have to say, man. Forced back for the moment. Yeah, but Alicia, so smooth. Going to have Blinking back, popping that Guardian Shield. Now he's going to push back up and try to take out as many units as possible from Todd. Gonna go ahead and use that blink micro to be as cost effective as possible. But Todd right now uh, with the unit advantage, I feel. Yeah, a bit of a miscontrol here by Alicia actually, letting his stalkers get stuck a bit without doing any kind of damage. So Todd, I think he has taken a bit of a lead here. Uh, Alicia does have the stalker advantage, and obviously that is the only units out in the field at the moment. But a few of those are uh, back at his base, still need to reinforce this army. I feel like with the high ground, his units were in such a better position to go ahead and take Alicia. And he did such a good job, he even brought some probes up just in case and was uh, denying any of the blink out of Alicia. So here, Alicia is going to go ahead and engage again. They're going to be pushing in here once again, blinking back the whole army. But it looks like Todd, he does have research blink himself, going to blink forward aggressively. Looks to do a lot of damage. Looks like it's pretty even right now. Both players doing quite a bit of damage to each other's stalkers. But a lot of really good focus firing by Todd is helping him quite a bit. Good blinks as well. Well, you know what? He's going to need it, Darkin, because look at this. Dark Shrine, almost halfway completed for Alicia. I love this decision. He feels like he's behind. His army has been mopped up. He's going to go ahead and try to expand and get this uh, get this Dark Shrine up. Yeah, but this Dark Shrine is about 50 seconds from completion. It looks like Todd Smartly will be going for their counterattack. He obviously did wipe out that army of Alicia convincingly. There's not much right now to defend. Looking to take an expansion as well, which will be quite vulnerable. vulnerable. Uh, only Zelts right now, which might in and of itself be a tell to Todd that he is favoring this DT play. Absolutely, and you can see right now, Todd is just going to pour on the pressure. Some blink micro of his own there, and of course he can kite these Zealots all day. Absolutely, I yeah, can blink back the weakened stalkers. Uh, stutter step if he does want to, just not going to be favoring that, but he will be able to wipe out this force regardless. And really, uh, Alicia does have the DT Shrine finishing, warping in his first Dark Templar now. But Todd, if he smartly moves around, blinks away from this, he can still do quite a bit of damage to this pro count. Moving in now. Yeah, absolutely, and you can see here he's going to have to have this hero DT to mop this up as the probes of Alicia are just getting rocked right now. You can see Millennium Todd having his way with the Korean Protoss, just going ahead and yeah. doing work in the main. And look at this, he is so smartly th throwing down a Photon Cannon in the main, seeing all those Zelts and making the tell. We'll have that Photon Cannon out to deal with these DTs, but it looks like it may be focused down. He did actually push out with his units, so he does not have those to mop that up. The first Photon Cannon will fall, but looking back at the base of Alicia, he is down to only one probe right now, and he is in horrible shape. He has to rely completely on these DTs, and it looks like Todd will be getting an Observer out in just a moment. Well, you called it dark, and Todd really hit that timing perfectly uh, right before that Dark Shrine finished, and that's what did the damage, I think, that did Alicia in. As you can see, 8 supply of 92. There's really no way out of this for Alicia. He's trying his best right now to eke out some kind of win with these uh, Dark Templar, but the Observer is now out. When he just moved that over to these DTs, the cannon has also finished, so we'll be taking those out with ease. Going to wipe out the remaining Dark Templar, also attacking that Nexus. And it looks like Alicia, he knows he only has a few DT out. He will be GGing out of this game. So again, so well played by Todd, taking an early win here in, the, in this extended series. Absolutely, and you know, I think that was just really good use of the word absolutely all the way through that cast. <laughs> <laughs> I have to feel like you didn't fully commit to that laugh, but that's okay. But if we can kind of review the game for a second, I think that Alicia making the Dark Shrine, he knew he was in trouble, had to throw up a Hail Mary, if you will. And it was really the only yeah. way to get back into the game. And I'm shocked, man. I gotta say, Todd really impressed me. Millennium Todd showing he's got uh, the stuff 
of uh, that it takes to become a become a true champion. Yeah, again, Todd making such a good read, knowing that his opponent will be low on the unit count and was making that crucial counterattack at the perfect time, was able to kill off those zealots and the Dark Templars when you can blink around like that, do not fight too well on their own. So awesome play there by Todd. I look forward to see what he comes out with in the next game here. Yeah, let's get to game two. Let's check it out. <laughs> 